What is going on everyone? Welcome to the Thai Live channel. My name is Min and today I will be doing a backfill with a different design on this client's nails. As you can see her nails right now is red and we're gonna go ahead and just do some holiday designs on that. You know what I mean? The holiday is about to end. You won't see these designs anymore but if you're still doing it hopefully this helped. You know so by the end of this video we're gonna be talking about how this process is done but you know we're gonna be sharing some story because you know how i feel about this industry y'all if y'all listening to me long enough you know i'll be sharing some experience about the nail industry but trying to teach y'all at the same time but if y'all new to the channel go ahead and subscribe you know what i mean and so the way we going to start with this fill is that you know as a fill it's one of the hardest thing it's just dealing with what the client's gonna bring back to you that's what a fill is and for those of you who don't understand why a fill is purposely done, it's because a fill is to protect the bottom of the natural nails. So let's say if the client is wearing acrylic nails and whatever length that they have on right now, your goal as a nail tech is to really enhance the natural nail growth on the bottom to that length. That is the ultimate goal. That's why they call it nail extension. Nail extension is not just putting on tips and taking them off and keep doing the same thing because that will eventually ruin the client's nails. And we don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to protect the client's nails so that they can have beautiful, healthy nail on the bottom. But at the same time, if you protect the nails, high chance they're going to keep coming back to you. And that is how you build more income for yourself as a nail tech. For those of you who just only want to do full sets, you are just limiting yourself from other service that's really good money out there. However, I did mention earlier, a backfill is very difficult than a full set because you don't know what the clients come in with the nails looking like. Yeah, that's right. Let's say you do a brand new set, right? You know they be doing all kind of shit around the house that is unnecessary with their nails. Mm-hmm. I hear stories, clients be using their fingernails to open up boxes. I hear clients be picking up trash, digging dirt with their nails. For the lower of God, I don't even know what they're going to do with their nails, putting into place that they shouldn't even put in. You know what I mean? So what we trying to say is that those nails go through a lot of damage. And what I am doing is that I am trying to take off her gel polish but at the same time i am examining the lift because when the clients come back within a month y'all my clients they don't come back every two weeks like most salon will tell you to come back i use the good product it lasts on them there's hardly any lift on this client but you know there's always the little bit side edges where there so what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean it up using the metal bit drill and we're gonna go ahead and just cut between the lift and the non-lift y'all you know if you guys ever see a lift is when it's really kind of light bubbly looking and that's what you don't want and you can see i'm going in with the um, acrylic nippers where i am going to nip off the lift because i already cut between the lift and the non-lift if you are looking at a piece of nail you see the lift part is kind of bubbly you got to cut between the non-lift area and the lift area so after i cut that i'm going to go in with the metal drill bit again and i am going to to smooth out the surface i'm going to smooth out the surface between the natural nails and the acrylic by doing so you're going to just create this beautiful feel because my goal of doing a backfill is to make it look like a brand new set that is the goal if y'all never understand that Okay, when y'all do a fill and your nails look like y'all still doing a fill, then we got a problem with that fill. So you don't want to have that problem as a nail tech, okay? We got to make things look flawless, y'all, okay? If you here to make things look flawless, then you on the right channel. But you here just to be mediocre, then you in the wrong channel. Because we here about get some education going on. And we about make everybody successful up in the mix. You know what I mean? So what I'm going to do after I clean up the cuticle line, everything smoothing out the surface, I'm going to cut down the length. You know, as the client doing all kind of stuff and putting their finger where it doesn't belong, their fingernails is going to curve throughout the days, y'all. 
it's going to curve and that square shape ain't square no more. It's kind of round the corner. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut it down. And a lot of times I always tell the clients, do you want me to cut it down the amount that it has grown out? So if you look at the, the top part of her nails and you see where it grows out, you can cut it exactly how much it is so that she get the same equivalent length that she had last time. And you know you got to go in with the measurement. So if you ever measure a fingernail, it's really simple. You put it each finger the same together and you start from the cuticle and you look down to the nails, okay? So that's how you measure. But anyways, y'all, so I hope y'all enjoying this so far. I know this is a long video and all, but you know, there's a lot of things I can share with y'all. So let's keep going. So I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, go in with a paper sander and we are going to go ahead and just smooth out the um, natural nails. When you guys are doing this part, make sure your your speed is not too high because you're dealing with the natural nail at this moment right here. All you want to do is just keep it light, get all that oil base out, and really at this moment right here, you can tell it's very nice. Look how well the uh, flushing down of the acrylic to the natural nails and around the cuticles. But I tell you what, this whole process right here took me 30 minutes. I don't know why I try to do as fast as I can, but it still takes me 30 minutes to prep the nail before I start any type of acrylic application. It does take that long. And that's why I tell you a, a feel is, is, is a complicated. Luckily, this client right here, her nail is good. Like she came in with 10 fingers of her nails on, you know what I mean? Some clients, they come in with missing finger. They got cracked edges on the edge. They got some burn stain from smoking a blunt. I mean, there's all kind of scenario when they come in and you have to fix that as a nail tech. You know what I mean? The crazy one's the one with the burnt roaches. I don't know why they got to be like, you know, smoking all the way to the roaches and burn their fingernails or at least use a paper clips or use some kind of paper uh, clothes hanger or something. You know what I mean? But they be coming and I say, why you burn? They say they be cooking. I say, you cooking the wrong stuff, honey. You cooking the wrong stuff. But anyways, y'all, I'm telling y'all, man, I deal with a lot of clients throughout the day, y'all. And you know me, I love all my clients. So I, I have fun with them. So after I clean up the nail base, everything, paper sand, I'm going to go in with the dehydrator, y'all. You see that little pump I just pumped right there? That's the dehydrator. It's just going to go ahead and evaporate all the oil base just to help the acrylic bond a lot longer. And I tell you what, most of my clients, they go in uh, for once a month. Yo, I save them a lot of money each visit, you know. We, we charge them, but then I explain to them how I'm saving them money by just making that one trip once a month. I'm going to go in with the protein bond. This is a young nail protein bond. It's like AKA primer. It really works great, y'all. I tell you what, this is going to be the game changer if you guys have lift problem when it comes to a quick application, y'all. This is a game changer. I like this product. Uh, I do have it in the description. If you guys need any type of product that I am using, it's in the link. But other than that, y'all, so after I put this primer on, you know it's about to go down. So the acrylic that I had on for her, it was like uh, the previous one. It was, I, I believe it was just a clear acrylic. So today we're going to go in with the clear acrylic again. Uh, we're going to match it up. Uh, the clear that I'm using is uh, clear speed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the application. As you all know, when it comes to a backfill application, a lot of people just go ahead and fill in the gap. With me, I like to go ahead and take the acrylic and I want to go ahead and just fill it in on the whole nails, y'all. I just want to fill it in on the whole nail. I just want to get that nice balance. You know what I mean? Uh, I feel like that is very important. Uh, the reason why I did such a good cleanup preparation before the application is because when I'm filling in clear powder, you don't want to see any type of lines, any type of lines that you cut from the lift. You don't want to see any type of like uh, residue that you're going to overlap with the clear powder. I see a lot of that happening when nail techs are rushing. I see a lot of that when uh, people are not good at cutting off the lift. I see a lot of that when people are not smoothing down the surface correctly. Those are something that's why it took me so long to get to this process. I have to prep it right, get it right, so that when I am doing the application, 
I want it to look like it's brand new, even on clear powder, especially on clear powder. So as you can see, if you guys are new to acrylic application, doing a backfill is actually the most easiest uh, process when it comes to acrylic application is because you only filling in the gap that is grown out. Uh, however, um, that's when I was starting out, a lot of people was like, oh, let him do the fill. They just feel like it's easier. But now that I'm 20 years in, I tell you what, the fill application is easier, but the process of preparation for a, a fill is one of the most complicated process in that procedure. And I just want to share that with y'all so that y'all don't feel like this is an easy task. It is hard. And that's why I constantly tell a lot of my clients that a backfill is equivalent price as a full set. Depends on how it is done, right? Like for example, this client right here, she had all solid colors coming in. Now she wants to design. Of course, that's going to cost her differently. And then of course, that might cost her more than her full set last time because if she pays $50 for her food set last time, but this time she come in for a backfill and fills are literally $5 cheaper because there's no difference in terms of procedure if anything is more intent. So let's say she pays $45 for the service, but now she wants more design. That design can cost up to $20 to $25 depends on what she wants, right? So now she's getting a backfill with paying more cost in a full set. And that makes sense the way I explained it, right? So I'm telling y'all, it's the depend on the situation. So if y'all out there as a nail tech hustling, y'all got to think about that too, because you're going to get hit by a lot of clients saying like, how come you charge me more than you charged me last time when I'm getting a fill? So you really have to educate the clients and explain to them because you know them clients out there, they might like what you do, but they tight on their money and they're going to try to question you and you don't want to lose a business over that little penny stuff. So what you're going to do as a nail tech is you got to go ahead and explain to them how you're going to charge them and let them know the price and explain to them the process. You will never go wrong if you explain to the clients the process that you're going to do when it comes to doing nails because the process is going to give them a big scope like a map to know that wow there's a lot of things you have to do exactly that's why i'm charging you more calm your ass down anyways y'all don't get me emotional and everything i i like to ramp on and all that so after i do the application you know the filing part got to be done however when you guys are doing a backfills the, sometimes the shape is already there. There's only a little bit adjustment that you have to do. However, when the new nails are growing out, it does look a little bit wider. So you kind of have to shift it back in to make the shape look nice. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now. If you guys are shaping, the main thing is really is holding the client's finger. I think holding the client's finger is very important. If you look how I'm holding. I got my thumb right on that cuticle line. I'm pinning it down a little bit more firm because if you're just holding the client's finger very gently and you're filing very hard, it vibrates on their finger. It's irritating. It's not very comforting. You don't want that to happen to you and your client. Hold, it, hold the finger down a little bit firm and you see how my other three fingers just kind of like, but I'm constantly holding down her side cuticles, y'all. That is the main thing to prevent the file from cutting the client's finger. So after I file all the fingers, y'all, I'm going to go in with the electric drill. The electric drill, what I really focus on is really starting from the side cuticle, working my way to the middle and to the other side. I do that consistently until I find a good flush. When I say the word flush what i mean is you want that acrylic shaved down directly perfectly to the nail of the natural nails however you do not want to give them the ring of fire meaning you don't want to go too deep with the acrylic uh, with the electric drill on their nails because you're going to create that nice scar tissue on their fingernails and that's painful that will stay until the nail grows out so you do not want that to happen so be very gentle if you guys are using the drill just tap tap let go do not keep it in one direction for a long time 
if you guys are wondering what speed I usually like to use when I comes to doing this part, I love maximum speed. I don't care what drill I use, I will max it out because I find that my bit runs a little bit more smooth. It gives it more a smooth surface, but be very careful. Um, look how I'm putting my other finger, touching my other finger for stability. That's the key right there. You got to do that all the time. That's the technique. You will get cramped up. You don't do it all the times, but it's your body, your muscles going to get used to it. But that is the key to really stabilize your drill bit. And the drill bit that I'm using is I always like to use an old drill bit using this part right here. The new one, you can cut the clients very fast. It will shave down the crit very fast. And I don't like that. I like using old drill bit because it gives me times to really shave down the acrylic and not worry about cutting the client's skin. So that's my concern. So how do I work in my bits? So what I usually do is when I have a new bit, I like to use it to take off the gel polish or shave down the acrylic when it's thick. Other than that, I don't touch the cuticle until it gets a little bit more dull so that it's more comforting for me to work around the cuticle. So that hopefully helps you guys out if you guys are afraid to work close to the cuticle. Just use old metal drill bit, but keep it clean, always clean it, keep it in the quad. So after that, y'all, you know all the shaving down. The cuticle should look really nice at this moment. I'm gonna go ahead and buff the nails. When you guys are buffing the nails, just be very careful about what side buffing you're using. I like to use the like fine grid uh, on the buffing. There's also a coarse one. The coarse one seems to change the shape very much when you guys are buffing. I like the soft part. So I'm just gonna buff on the top, on the side. I always like to buff it on the bottom to get that nice line on, on the shape. However, when you guys are buffing anything around the shape area, don't buff it too hard, just light handed because you don't want to shift the shape. Sometimes I do have to have the file in hand ready just in case I see a little shift on the shape. Doing nails, the shape is very important to me because the shape speaks really loud when it comes to looking at a set of nails. And after that, you got the design, you know what I mean? So here I am doing this design for the holiday. You know, she had the red on earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with this black. We're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to keep it kind of dark for the holiday. You know, like we don't want to be all bubbly, snobbly and all that. We're going to go in kind of dark. So I am going to go in with this black polish. Uh, black polish is very hard to do trying to get around the cuticle. And when I polish, I don't want to have any types of polish dripping on the skin, especially black, y'all especially black we don't want that so what i'm going to do is since this gel it doesn't dry until you put it under the light i'm going to go ahead and just work my way up look i start out i'm just going to fill in all the gap you see i'm just going to fill in the gap i'm not even going to work the cuticle yet but as i'm filling in the gap i'm going to slowly brush around the cuticle yo i'm just going to do it slowly around the cuticle but the good thing is i already got the most of the nail fill in so you got to start like that you know how back in the day when y'all go to school or even y'all go in school now they teach you like oh start from the cuticle and then work your way down mm, that works too but you know what when it comes to painting it is your way like find what's comfortable for you and not what's comfortable for others and then you trying to copycat and it's not working for you do what's right for you as long as keep it nice and clean y'all and the next two finger we're gonna go in with this pink okay so when you guys are polishing the first coat is the most important coat once you get the first coat down the second coat is really easy so i'm gonna cure her nail for 60 seconds when you guys are putting the nail under the lamp i give you one good advice Tell the client to lift their thumb up a little bit because sometimes the bottom of the thumb does not get dry. And if you ever polish somebody's nail and it doesn't get dry towards the end of the thumb, it gets really wrinkly. And you really have to repolish that again. So that really ruins your vibe. So tell them to lift up the thumb when they put it under the light. So same thing, I'm gonna go in with the second coat. And the second coat, y'all, you know, it's really simple, filling in, making it darker. And But the second coat, you got to look at the detail of the nail and see where you can fill in to make it more perfect without smearing the fingernails, of course. So after that, you know, this is look like a simple design, right? So the next two fingers that we're going to do is we're going to add some snowflakes, you know, uh, 
we gonna try to make like add some what ornaments you know i want to see what i can do for her and this video right here y'all i did it before christmas but i've been so busy i just haven't had a chance to really post this and you know how the holidays goes so i apologize about that but if you guys are enjoying the video and you guys are still watching to this point i appreciate it give it a thumbs up y'all share this video to whoever you can share with uh like this video leave it a comment i love hearing your comments i love hearing your feedbacks uh, i'm not perfect as a nail tech but i do love what i do and i'm always busy and i have a way to build this business uh, individually and successfully with other people that I have worked with too. So I want to share that with y'all. So here we go. First, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just add a little glitter ombre on the ring finger for her girl. So I'm going to make it kind of simple. I'm going to make it nice. If you guys are doing ombre just polishing with glitter, it's really simple. You add some glitter towards the tips and you just kind of dry out your brush and you just kind of bring it back up a little bit and that's how you do it so for this one right here i'm gonna go in and create a nice little present box for her so the present box when it comes to doing design y'all i tell you what it takes practice okay i don't care what y'all say nail is an art it takes a lot of practice to be good every single day y'all it's not just putting up the acrylic anymore nowadays people are asking for art and you better be ready because you need to be an artist if you're the artist you're going to be very successful in the nail industry so the way to be a good artist you gotta have good stability get used to doing be comfortable and that's how you do the uh really nice present box y'all so here we go i'm gonna go in with the snowflake and this snowflake is really simple y'all i'm just gonna create four lines here we go i'm gonna go ahead and just create four lines trying to make your lines kind of thin um when you guys are doing this part right here yes it is intense i get nervous all the times because every time you are doing freehand is never going to be the same but at least you know the process so this design right here i have done different type of snowflake but this one was a little bit different for me so since i do this line all i'm going to do is i'm going to go with my dotted line i'm going to start with my first dot with a little bit thicker dot and i'm going to work my way into making a smaller dot so you're going to go from thick to thin so i'm going to do that on every single line for the short line i'm just going to go in with two dots and for the long line i'm going to go in with three dots at this part right here i was like you know you just got to trust the process and follow the steps and this is actually the easiest way to do a snowflake my friend um i know a lot of people start putting the dots first and draw the line but what if you like draw the line and the line shift to the left the line shift to the right right and you gotta like what, what you gotta do restart over and keep doing over i draw out the line first because to me i feel like the line you can get that out of the way and work your way back in so after i finish that i'm gonna cure it i'm gonna go in with the ornaments y'all see it, it went from a simple design now we're like adding all kind of stuff on the nails right because that's how we do it we bougie like that boo so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and drop a couple glitter under the line and you know this is really easy because what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and just drop in try to create a nice little ball and you can go in with a little line brush and kind of spread that ornaments around just trying to make it a nice ball and all that it's really simple that's why i ex i want to show you guys this this stuff because you know when you look at somebody doing art you think like oh that's a lot of work it's really not that hard because most of the art that you can do on nails is just a couple lines here and there and you connect the dots, you know what I mean? That's how I look at it. So after that, you know, I'm going to go in with the top coat, y'all. You know, we always got to clean it up with the top coat. I am excited to show you guys how this turned out because, you know, this client was loving. And, you know, when you do something really nice the whole time, you're like, man, I'm excited for this. You as a nail tech can already envision how this is going to look like. And that's the exciting part, right? So... You know, at this moment right here, this client's really appreciating it. She's feeling her nails. She is excited to show what her nails look like to the public. You know, usually when a girl gets the nails done, they be like, I'm ready to go shopping. I'm ready to talk with my fingers. You know what I mean? The attitude comes out, y'all. I ain't going to lie. But when you got a bad nail tech who, like, messed up your nail, there ain't no attitude. You walking out of there, man. But anyways, that's how her nails look like, y'all. Look at that. That is some beautiful stuff. The shapes. It looks like a brand new set, right? And that's how you do a backfill. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and i really hope that this video brought you some entertainment laugh and learn i hope you guys are successful in your journey nothing but love happy holiday to you and your family thank you very much